Who is Stranger Things 4? Well, I think I have the answer. Hello and welcome to the bottom of the planet, guys. It is me, Space Cadet Rookie, and today I'm going to be talking about Stranger Things Season 4 Volume 1, or Part 1. And right off the bat, I'm going to say uh, I don't have any good things to say about it. <sighs> I try to talk about things that really make me happy and passionate, and this show does that. Except it also doesn't. <laughs> Okay, alright, alright. I'm probably gonna get cancelled on the internet for some of the things I'm about to say. Uh, but I'm gonna say them anyway, while I go to the nether um, and build an old manor. That is my plans today. I'm just getting, you know, vaguely strong, some good tools and whatnot. It feels apt for Stranger Things, going to the upside down. I mean, that's definitely what what the nether is in, in the sense but anyway i think it, the show was consistent with its previous seasons the the editing the visuals the the audio the music everything everything it all just it flowed it had a perfect balance of everything and i think this season has done a better job than even the past two seasons hearkening back to the first season itself and they've done an excellent job of recapturing that feeling but there's a problem here um, it keeps ramping itself up. It keeps having to one-up itself, you know. The world used to be smaller and more mysterious. And that was amazing. We, we couldn't help ourselves. We didn't know anything. And now I feel like we know a lot. And that's a good thing. Uh, answers had to be given. But it just it keeps on having to one-up itself until the point that it's like become so high fantasy. Uh, and I like high fantasy, it's just, I don't know if it works for this. But, I will say, I do get enraptured by this high fantasy, the story, the stakes of where it's gone. It just feels like it's, it's, I don't know, it's gotten so big, too big. Um, yeah, but, I, look, it's ambitious, and I appreciate that, I don't mind that. But there are issues like, for instance, when, when we talk about D&D, I have to bring this up. So I am a D bleh, a Dungeons and Dragons player. It doesn't sound like it by the way I'm talking. But yeah, I love playing this game. It is chaotic, it is funny, it is interesting, and it's an infinite world of possibilities. And that's a bit like Stranger Things. They capture the spirit of D&D very well. The excitement, the joy, the foolishness. They do that well, except for when they don't. They always use uh, monsters within D&D &D as, as an allegory for the adventures they'll go on. And the Mind Flayer was horrifying. And honestly, seeing them again in this fourth season... Uh, spoilers alert, but if you're watching this at this point, I'm going to say some minor things. Don't worry, it won't be anything too crazy, okay? Okay? <laughs> um, the Mind Flayer was horrifying, but Vecna... Now, Vecna is quite a interesting D&D villain boss right god it's very primordial it's very um very terrifying and i love the villain i do love the villain in the show uh he's the the actor is amazing and i love that he's used they've used prosthetics and not cgi he gets to act in the same way as lord voldemort did you know i i really appreciate that and i enjoy it but <sighs> it feels cheesy at a, in a lot of times it feels kind of cheesy and it also feels like the tie to DD it doesn't portray how terrifying it can be and how difficult it can be and dark uh, but this is the darkest season of stranger things i will say and now that goes back to the references to stephen king and all of the 80s trivia and i really enjoy that but I don't know, I feel like it's really trying really hard to be like, we're an adult show now, this is very serious. Yeah, so as you can hear, I'm a bit in two minds. Like, on one hand, I find it too cheesy, on the other hand, I find it too dark. Um, yeah. And then another, another thing, the other bad thing I have to say about this show <laughs> is <coughs> the CGI 11. <laughs> Someone has to say it, okay? It's bad. It's bad. I don't like it. It's weird. We get shown a little tiny Eleven and <clears throat> in her flashbacks, in her actual setting, I think it's quite cool. I think it's interesting to see how small she was and how big the world was and terrifying. I think it's really good to see her in that light. But 
It just feels so jarring where the rest of the show has such good quality. The visuals look amazing. The CGI in this world these days looks so good. But this is the only scene that feels very weird. I wish they would stop doing this. This happened in The Mandalorian as well. Well, sorry, Boba Fett with uh, Luke, but, but both of them, I guess. And look, these CGI deep fakes, I, I think they're interesting. I do, but it's also, it's gonna age badly, basically. We're gonna look back on it a couple of years ago, ooh, what is that? And that's quite sad because Stranger Things on whole has done things really perfectly, except for that one episode where uh, Eleven finds out that she has friends out there and they were gonna make a spin-off show about that and that tanked because everyone hated it, yeah. But that leads me to, who is Stranger Things for? So that's how that actually led me to that question. Basically, Stranger Things is a mismatch of so many things, right? If it's not for me, the D&D player, who is it for? It is, it is an action, it is a sci-fi, it is a horror, it is a mystery, it is a comedy, it's a classic 80s everything, basically. Um, but then who is it appealing to? Is it just the guys who enjoy 80s nostalgia? Is it, yeah, I could go on all day, but what, what I've realized is that it is for everyone. It has catered for everyone. And how I know this is basically everything they've done, they've learned from. So they really care about their audience's reaction to things, I've noticed. They've learned, they've realized how much everyone loves Steve. And so we get so much more Steve. Um, and th that's, that's really freaking cool. I like that. I, I, I'm glad. All the characters that are, we enjoy, they either <laughs> give us more of them or they kill them off. <laughs> and uh, I think it's quite interesting. Another thing, for instance, the, the episode where Eleven meets her, you know, uh, other friends in, in season two. And they were going to make a spin-off show about that and whatnot. But it really did not... It, it did not get appreciated at all. People didn't enjoy it and they never did anything more with that. They dropped it. They drop anything that isn't enjoyed. They give us exactly what we want. And I like that. It's it's a very rare case. It's like when Sonic, the team changed the CGI Sonic and actually improved it, you know, to actually make, make, make it better. They listened to the reaction and I like that. Unlike Morbius, who just kept showing in cinema, I guess. It is a flawless movie and everyone loves it so much. We want it for a third time. Please re-release it. <laughs> but getting back to the point, um, Stranger Things is for everyone. It is for the parents. It is for kids. It is for... It is one of those shows that just appeals to everyone. And I think that's cool. That answers my question. It's for everyone. And I like that. So that's just something I wanted to... to talk about one of the scenes that really hit me a lot was when Max was in the under <clears throat> when Max was in the underdark I wanted to say underdark but it's not underdark it is the upside down when Max was in the upside down she was running to try get out man I did not expect that the whole way through the show had to like almost work to win me over because I mean I was kind of over Stranger Things but I was like cool I could do it another season let's go let's see what happens I, was, I had a very low opinion of it already but then it really won me over like I thought it was a bit cheesy at first and it was very slow to start but at that point at that point I was like oh damn okay this is actually getting really good I was swept up in the high stakes and her running through the portal and the feeling of it. And they really made me care about Max there. And I've always cared about all the characters and Dustin is a favorite of mine, but Max's story arc there was so important. And it wasn't just her, it's Harper's story arc as well. And so many of them, I liked it a lot. I appreciated what they did with it a lot. And I'm, I haven't said too much to spoil anything, but overall, they won me over with this season and it made me realize, okay, Stranger Things is gonna end really well. I have that good feeling that this show is going to end and become what can only be called a masterpiece. In the same ways I sort of feel about Attack on Titan. The stakes getting higher and in theory you should be over it by now because it's been out for so long, but the final seasons, that the end is here and it's just so good <laughs> and the stakes are so high and it's just great. 
Okay, I've talked enough. What do you think about my house? What do you think about this? I really like it and I thought it was quite an interesting build. I like this new build palette. I really do uh, with this new 1.19 update. I enjoy packed mud. I like mud. <laughs> okay, um, I'm done rambling now. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and i hope you like this video i know it was a bit all over the place and i had a lot of bad things to say about a really good show don't cancel me i just wanted to say something different uh, everyone has only good things to say and uh we need a world of diversity don't we okay <laughs> uh i'm gonna see you guys later this has been me space cadet rookie and bye bye